Hello, welcome to another video. I'm going to be upgrading my file server again. Um, I've bought a four terabyte drive from eBay. It was 40 pounds, including postage. So that's about 10 pounds per terabyte. Um, but the problem is that there currently isn't room in the system for more drives. Um, so this is going to involve either well there's a few problems actually there's not enough room in the case and well the sort of is there's enough room for the drives i've got a two terabyte drive here a two terabyte drive here this one can come out that's a one terabyte drive um but then this power supply doesn't have enough sata connections uh, SATA power so I've got an SSD here and then two drives so this has only got three SATA power connections and I can connect an adapter but I think I've already done that um, I've already connected an adapter for additional um, SATA connections so I don't want to then have another splitter running off that so I'm going to replace this power supply with a different one. It's got more SATA connections. That'll let me put the extra drive in. And we'll probably also have a look at stable bit drive pool because that's got some really useful features. Well, what I wanted to do before switching out the power supply was check the power usage. So hopefully you can see that in the background. We've got an idle of 24.7 watts. That's the lowest I'm seeing on the meter at the back there. And then if I use CPU-Z to stress this system, we're seeing about 45 watts at the wall over there. So we'll be able to switch the power supply over and see if there's much change in this this is a 250 watt power supply here it's relatively quiet but you know, i can still hear the fan a little bit so i'll just shut this down before switching the power supply over and this system's running windows 10 it's got 32 gigabytes of ram and it's got an i5-4460T processor in it. And when it's switched off at the wall, it's just using 0, 0.0 watts. I don't think my cat will like this bit because I'm going to have to move some stuff. And she'll probably want to not be in the area when things are moving around. Also don't want the power supply to fall and land on it. So this is the power supply that's coming out of this PC. And this is the power supply that's going to go into the PC. Okay, so the power supply is in. I've removed the old one terabyte drive and there's lots more cables, so it's a little bit messier, but let's see how much power it uses with the power supply on, but the system off. Um, that's still showing as 0, 0.0. Let's turn the power on. And the setup in terms of the drives that are connected and powered up is the same. Um, I've just changed the power supply and removed the drive that wasn't connected. Um, we should be getting something on the screen, except that this cable's fallen out. Okay, so it's idling at 3% in the processor and the power usage is 27.8 watts, which is an increase. Um, but let's see what happens when we stress the CPU and see if that is also a higher number. So yeah, 
that is 48.3 or 48 watts when the CPU is under load. So this power supply does seem to have increased the power usage by about, um, I'd say about three watts or just under three watts. Um, so that's that's not a massive amount really. Um, and I expect when we add the extra drive, we'll see the power usage increase again. So I'll just do that now. Um, this drive is from 2020, came in a sealed bag and is a Skyhawk and was made in 2020. Let's get a close up of the sound of these drives as I switch the system on. Okay, it's dropped to about 3% CPU use and it's 34 watts. And if we stress the CPU, the power consumption goes up to 52.8, 53 53.1 watts. And if we do some quick maths on that that means the hard drive that we've added is using between 4.8 watts and 6.2 watts but it's not actually doing anything i expect this would go up further if we were copying files from one drive to another for example but then you've also got the added power consumption of the processor doing something as well so if we have a look at crystal disk info we can have a look at the drive we've just put in and it's this drive here st4000 vx007 and it says it's got power on hours of zero hours so the company reselling it or refurbishing it must have been able to reset these figures because it says it's only been switched on three times um and as far as I can tell, everything is reporting as good on this drive. So I'm going to initialize it in disk management. Here's our four terabyte drive that gives us 3,726 gigabytes. And I'll just create a simple volume on this. And I'll call it ST4GB and perform a quick format. I've actually named it 4GBST and this is it appearing in Windows. But what we can do with drive pool, stable bit drive pool, is that we can add that drive to our existing drive pool. Um, here it is for, oh, I've called it 4GB, I meant to call it 4TB, but it doesn't matter. I can add this to the pool. And now in our managed pool, we have a larger drive. So drive F is now a 5.46 terabyte drive. In fact, we can add our other existing two terabyte drive, even though it's got data on already, we can add it. And then our drive pool is now a 7.28 terabyte drive on the system made up from these three drives here. So we'll just have a look in Windows Explorer and we've got this drive pool. Let's refresh that. And 
it's 5.15 terabytes free of 7.27 terabytes. So in here, I've got a backup of files, but they're actually stored on the individual drive. So drive pool creates this folder and then in there, there's the actual files. And that means that you can still access them if this drive pool software ever has any problems then you know you can still access it and the other thing you can do is tell it what you want to be duplicated so we can go to manage pool file protection and folder duplication and we can say that we want this for example to be duplicated enable duplication protects your files from drive failures so enabling duplication the system will go off and duplicate this onto another drive you can see here it's got x2 which means there's two copies of that or there will be two copies of that as that duplicates it across more than one drive and this is a really neat way of having a simple sort of collection of drives and that collection of drives giving you the ability to say well actually this folder is really important so i want two copies of it so that if one of these drives fails it'll be on one of the other drives and if there's more room in this system i could throw in another couple of two terabyte or one terabyte drives and this pool could be even larger and that's a really neat feature of this and this software um, gives you a 30 day trial but it's only $30 so I think the functionality of it and the way it works the ease of use and everything else makes it quite good value and I think that's a like lifetime license for this software so I'm quite impressed by this. You can also add um, SSDs to this for faster performance. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I'll have a look at that at some point. So here it's um, duplicating this content. And here's Willis. And I'm not sure why it's not telling me about this disk activity, but um, yeah, maybe this is just general. Maybe this doesn't include this duplicating bit, but yeah, I think if we have a look in Task Manager, we've got one of these drives where it's reading the data and one of the drives where it's writing the data. So it's started to use this new drive that we've added for this additional storage and in here it's got the same folder so you get two copies and I guess you, you just need to remember that this is your main drive the drive pool and yeah it gives you a nice large drive even though this drives almost full with other things yeah I quite like this system means you can you don't have to buy an eight terabyte drive for hundreds of pounds you can get a collection of cheaper drives put them all together and get a system that is kind of more useful if you had one drive that was eight terabytes you wouldn't have a second drive to back it up to so in some ways having more than one drive is quite a good thing to do in a system um yeah so let me know what you think. Have you used um, drive pool or have you used something else? Have I run into any problems with this? Um, and yeah, what do you do for a file server? This um, system is a quad core processor, low power, but quad core and lots of memory because I have Hyper-V on here. I want to be able to run lots of different Windows systems, but um, yeah i could have a much lower power system and just have a basic file server but i quite like having windows and being able to do other things with this machine so yeah that is all for now i think um i'll just 
let you see my cat. I'll see if she wants to look at the camera. Nope, she does not. There you go. Say bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.